Okay, we are going to finish up Ecclesiastes chapter 4. It's very short. It's from 13, chapter 4, verse 13 to 16. I mean, this might be a 10-minute Bible study because I just want to finish up this chapter. We just went through oppression and toil are meaningless. Now, advancement is meaningless, chapter 13. Wow. I mean, do you can you hear what the Bible's saying to you? Most people never ever find this information out. So you could say, well, this was just some king in the Bible, King Solomon. No, this was God's King David and his son, King Solomon. God said to King David, I will make you my, a mighty warrior. He said to King Solomon, I will give you the greatest wisdom of any other king and the greatest wealth of any other king. So this is God speaking to you, and whatever they say in the Bible, you know, even 3,000 years ago, is valid for today's way of living. Because why? Because God never, God never speaks words without them being the same, the same, the same throughout history. Because God himself is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. God does not change like shifting shadows. So when you read, advancement is meaningless, chapter 4. Are you seeing that every single thing God is telling you in this book so far is 100% contrary to living in America and capitalism today? I'll give you a couple seconds here to think about it. Can you not see? We go back to chapter one. Everything is meaningless. Wisdom is meaningless. Pleasures are meaningless. Toil is meaningless. Wisdom and folly are meaningless. The madness of folly. A time for everything. Oppression, toil is meaningless. Friendliness with the world is meaningless. Now we're finishing up chapter four. There's only 12 chapters in this book. Advancement is meaningless. Like four verses. So what do you do in American capitalism? You get a job and you try to advance. Every single employee in the United States of America is trying to advance. You say, no, not everybody wants to be in management. No, I'm not, I'm not talking about management. You're trying to advance your wages, aren't you? Yes. Everybody wants more pay, more wages. You're trying to advance your wages. I'll tell you a quick story since this is a short Bible study. About 25 years ago, I asked God, or about closer to 30 years ago, I asked God for more money. I asked God, can I have more money? I wasn't to the point where I really knew how to manage my money yet. I was like 32 years old. I says to God, can I have more money? God said to me, yes, you can. I'll give you more money. Boy, God showed me who he was. So over the next 12 months, my income got cut by 50% in my household. Wow. Okay. My wife was working full-time. I was working full-time. We had good money in Colorado. I was an assistant manager at a sandwich shop for the area and the time and the year I was making some good money. And, and at the end of each month, I didn't have any extra money. 
So I asked God, can I have more money so I can have extra money to save? God said, yes, I'll give you more money, just like you ask. So over the next year, our income got cut by 50%. I wasn't panicking or nothing. I just said, Lord, I don't understand. I thought, well, he's going to give me more money because he promised. Now check this out. Here's how God operates. Because my income got cut by 50%, I started watching <laughs> I started watching every single dime I was given. See, when I had more than enough, I had too much before actually. I started watching every single dime. I mean, I was before when we were both working full time, I spent every dime we got, which was a lot of money back then. Then when my income got cut in half, here's the funny thing. That's when I really started to learn in life. I have to watch every single dime in this world. Okay. So at the end of the year, you know, I was saying, Lord, I talk to God every day, several times a day. He answers me back every single time. And I said, I'm not trying, you know, maybe you want me to go longer. But you said, you promised to give me more money. I just don't understand. Could you explain it to me? You know, I said it with reverence and fear and holiness towards him and the Lord said, yes, I would love to explain it to you. Thank you for asking. <laughs> he said, how much money do you have? I said, I have like $3,000. He said, how much money did you have a year ago? I said, zero. He said, I kept my promise. I gave you more money. And I didn't realize what was going on. I mean, I was only 32 years old. I said, wow. You cut my income in half and forced me to start paying attention to everything. And I have $3,000 more than I had a year ago when I had twice the income. See, before I was bringing home like I don't know, 50,000 a year or something. I had zero money. Then over a year, we were beat, we brought home only 25,000. And I had 3,000, I saved $3,000 out of that 25,000. And the Lord said, having more money does not, it doesn't make any difference how much you make. That's when I started getting all this financial wisdom. Yeah, okay. Because over that year, we stopped eating. Every time we went somewhere in Colorado, we ate out, you know, which was cheap back then. But, you know, $10, $10, $10. Another 15 for gas, $15, $10, $10, you know. We didn't eat out. We took sandwiches. We cut our food that year by like 60%. So instead of just driving around aimlessly, I would pick specific spots to go to that cut our gas by 50%. I didn't buy things. My rent was cheap. I didn't have a car payment, no house payment. We used to go see things. We used to go to movies when we were in our early 30s. So I stopped doing that. We went and did outdoor things. Hiking, camping, climbing mountains. 
It was cheaper to climb Pikes Peak in Colorado than it was for two people to go to a movie, get popcorn, soda, and candy back in the day. All you had to do was take some food in your backpack and walk up the top of Pikes Peak, throw out a tent, spend the night for free, and hike back the next day 12 miles. It was In two days, it was a 25-mile round-trip hike, which I have done several times when I was younger. And here's what God gave me. God gave me the tools and the information and now the, the truth and wisdom and knowledge. I can make $100 go longer than you can. I can usually make $100 go a long ways, like, like an old widow. Yeah. I'm not ashamed to say it. The Lord showed me. He kept his promise. He gave me more money. So then, guess what? Our income increased. As soon as I learned the lesson, our income went not all the way back up because that's when I learned. Wait a minute. We don't have to work full time to be happy in life. Aha. That's the story of almost every single thing I'm telling you on all of these videos. Now look, advancement is meaningless. Better a poor but wise youth. Better, verse 13, better a poor but wise young man than an old man who is foolish, a foolish king who no longer knows how to heed a warning. Better a poor young man with wisdom than an old foolish king who no longer knows how to heed a warning about his kingdom. Now, out here on the coast, this is true in every area of America, but here on the coast, I see a lot of rich 76-year-old guys. I know they're rich because they just spent $90,000 cash on a truck, and that was just their spare money. I don't necessarily know them personally. I just see them every day, and not just one or two, dozens upon dozens. And they live in $600,000 houses down by the beach. They worked in California for 40 years. Now they're up here. They got 2 or $3 million plus a house. And they are miserable. <laughs> They're some of the most miserable people you'd ever meet. They are miserable, miserable, miserable. And I'm just saying the fact that truck didn't make them happy. And they're miserable because of what King Solomon said in chapter 3. Everything I've toiled for, I have to leave to a fool who comes behind me. Now listen, chapter 4, verse 13, 14, 15, and 16, and then we're done. Better off a poor but wise young man than an old but foolish king who no longer knows how to heed a warning. Now listen, they're using this on purpose. The young man... They're saying he's wise, but, you know, he's poor. He's too young to have a lot of money unless he was born into it. But And the king has endless amounts of resources, money. But he's foolish. The king is foolish in this example and doesn't know how to heed a warning. Now, how many middle-class Americans are foolish building their own little kingdom and they no longer know how to heed a warning from God. And they're about to be completely destroyed because they have no wisdom. But a young man who got, follows God and got, you know, like Timothy in the uh, New Testament, he was very young and followed God, followed Jesus Christ. 
he didn't have any money, but he was extremely wise because he was young and followed Jesus. And Paul was training him how to follow Jesus. There's nothing better than a 10 or 12 year old kid who says, yes, I believe in Jesus. And they say, I love going to church. I love going to church camp and all the activities. I believe in Jesus and I really believe. And they say it with excitement. And you know, they're only 12 years old and they really believe in Jesus. People asked me when I was young, do you believe in Jesus? I said, yes. And I was so young and naive, of course. I said, yes, doesn't, doesn't everybody? And everybody laughed, all the adults laughed. I say at age like eight, someone asked me that. I didn't understand at eight years old why you wouldn't follow such a great offer for free with all the benefits that come with it. Jesus is like getting a fantastic job with endless benefits and wisdom and money and a loving relationship with your father taking care of your father's business. You don't even have to worry about your own business. You work on God's business, the word of God. And at, at age eight or years old, 10 years old, I didn't understand why, why would anybody not follow him? Because they were interested in getting what they wanted for themselves only. Okay, let's finish this up. Like I said, it's short. Better a poor but wise youth than an old but foolish king who no longer knows how to heed a warning. Doesn't that just sound like the, God, um, the hand of God writing that down, talking? The youth, the young man, may have come from prison to the kingship. <laughs> They're talking about Joseph now. His brother sold him into slavery and he went all the way to Egypt. He was sold and traded three or four times. He was in prison. And in one day, one afternoon, God brought Joseph before Pharaoh and, jo and Pharaoh said, this man knows how to hear from God. And he made him, he made Joseph second in charge of all of Egypt. Four or five hours earlier, Joseph was waking up in prison and going about his prison duties. He was so good at it, they even put him in charge of other prisoners in prison. He was so good at what he did. Why did God lift him up? Because God saw Joseph's faithfulness. He saw his faithfulness. So he lifted him up. He saw his faithfulness. Joseph was faithful even during the hard prison years. I don't know. He was like a slave or a prisoner for 20 years or something. And he did nothing wrong. Now, he was a sinner, but he didn't do anything wrong to be in prison. He was sold as a slave because his brothers were jealous that his father loved him the most. And in one single afternoon, Pharaoh said, here's my ring, put it on his finger. Here's my daughter. You can marry her and start having children. He ne Pharaoh never even met Joseph before. He just knew this man is from God. And that's all Pharaoh needed to hear. If God chose to speak to this one man out of everybody in Egypt, then God knows who the best man is. And so they put fine clothes on Joseph. They gave him a big, huge, fat bank account. They put him second in charge of all of Egypt. And Pharaoh, Joseph was so good at what he did, 
Pharaoh never even concerned himself anymore. He let Joseph do it. Pharaoh started enjoying life more because he found like the ultimate governor or the ultimate foreman in Joseph. And Joseph went around in luxury all the time. And he would govern, govern and rule all of Egypt. And then he brought the house of Israel down later during the famine, the drought. That's what it means. The, the youth may have come from prison to the kingship, or he may have been born in poverty within his kingdom. Now, I'll tell you another story. I was a busboy. I was a busboy. Bussing tables. I was a 20-year-old idiot. I didn't have skill. But I worked with this school teacher who was 10 years older than me. And he saw my potential because we were both Christians. He was a Christian and I was a Christian. And the, the, the manager of this restaurant quit. And they were overpaying that manager. I mean, like double what he was worth. They were way overpaying him. So the school teacher says, hey, Hang out here in the restaurant for a while. I'll be right back. He goes upstairs. Boy, this guy could convince, you know, a king to give you a, a free bag of diamonds, this school teacher. He comes back down a half hour later, talking to the store manager. He says, so they're going to come and talk to you tomorrow about being the manager. <laughs> I said, what? I don't want to be the manager. I, I want to go, I, I want to go home and party. <laughs> I was only 20 years old. He said, no, no, no. Being manager, it'll be good for you. No matter what happens, you can't possibly fail. The guy told me, he says, you don't have anything now. You don't know anything. The best, even if it's miserable, I want you to do it as long as you can just to prove. He said, I, he, I said, why did you do that without asking me? He said, God told me to go do it. I said, oh, okay, well, he must have told you then. I said, I better pay attention. They came down the next, on Monday morning. They said, I hear you want to be the manager. I said, okay. They said, we're only going to pay you half what we paid the other guy. I said, okay. Remember, I was a bus boy. I was getting a 50% raise. It was just a part-time job I was just going to do for a little while until maybe I went back to the packing house and started making four or $500 a week again. And he says... I mean, they threatened me, you screw this restaurant, blah, 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 blah. I didn't know anything. You see, I've lived a Joseph experience. They pulled him out of prison and put him in charge of everything in one single afternoon. I was bussing tables, and my Christian friend said, God told me that you should be the manager here. So I went upstairs and spoke to them. Wow. And they came down the next day and said, okay, you're the manager. I was pulled from being a busboy to management in one day. So I know what it was like. And I was standing there. I had to actually go buy a, t a white shirt and a tie. And some dress shoes. I didn't even own any. I had to go to work every day in a white shirt and a tie. <laughs> I, I know what it's like. I did not have wisdom. I didn't need wisdom. Jesus was going to tell me what to do, when to do it. And that's all a true story. The youth may have come from prison to the kingship or from busboy. 
<laughs> it may have come from being a busboy to be in the, and then it was a few months later, we were the number one restaurant in the entire Midwest of the United States. And I actually received an award from the vice president of all of J.C. Penney's at that time. It was a J.C. Penney's. I, I worked at a coffee shop inside as being the number one restaurant and the number one profit increase in one third of the United States. And that's what God did. It's like they used to have restaurants at J.C. Penney's, Sears, Montgomery Wards. They used to have little red rooms in these um coffee shops and these old department stores. And then they got rid of all of them. And now Walmart, they got McDonald's. Blessed a poor but wise youth than an old but foolish king who no longer knows how to heed a warning. The youth may have come from prison to the kingship, or he may have been born in poverty within the kingdom, his kingdom. I saw that I saw that all who lived and walked under the sun followed the youth who walked under the sun, S-U-N, the sun in the sky, the hot sun. I saw that all who lived and walked, you know, 